Hey everyone. Hi. Uh, hi. <laughs> For those of you who don't know us, uh, my name's Alicia Miller and I'm the founder of Core Emotional Healing. And I'm Janet Raptus. I am an energy healer, master energy healer, <laughs> and intuitive development teacher. She is. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, we're here together today because uh, we're celebrating a lot of things and we're also reflecting. It's the end of the year uh, and it's almost the new year. We're going into 2018 and um, most people reflect on this type of year anyway of like what happened and um, what you want to accomplish next year or what your intentions are and this month happens to also be my 10th uh, anniversary of starting my business so that was huge and I kind of realized it this month so I was like let's do a celebration because Janet and I also met this month like yes. this week <laughs> Um, five years ago yeah. so Jan and I have been supporting each other professionally um, and personally uh, in many ways uh, over the last five years so that's half of the time I've been in business and I've experienced the most gr the most growth uh, personally and professionally as well in those five in these five years um, so Janet and I um, we we have made um, probably the biggest impact in our lives being together and supporting each other in all these ways and um, many people see the businesses that we have created mm -hmm. and um, what we're doing out in the world and um, don't know the backstory of where yeah. we began <laughs> <laughs> and how hard it was getting here <laughs> so yeah. um, this video are you know is just for us to share our stories to help you if anyone out there um, is wondering how to uh, work for yourself and where to begin and we're gonna share the lessons that we learned and um, and also to help you see uh, what it takes uh, and how to get through the you know the hard times and the struggles and to um, accept those as well <laughs> so. yeah. <laughs> lots of acceptance <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, yeah so um, let's start with talking about how we met yeah and where we both were when we met <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Alicia was hosting a um, journaling workshop we had become Facebook friends like a month before that through kind of a really great serendipitous story but that's for another day <laughs> um, spirit threw us together and I showed up in her journaling workshop um, setting to set intentions for the new year and um, she started right after that doing these workshops, these branding workshops, and I was like totally fledgling in my business at the time, and I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing, and, <laughs> and so it started there. It started in those play shops that you did, yeah. which were so great for me as a, as a, as a new entrepreneur. Yeah. Well, my business actually started um, with me, and, and I guess one of the um, lessons uh, to share is my business started um, t five years before that, so 10 mm -hmm. years ago, with me taking a leap of faith. Mm -hmm. um, and I left my corporate job uh, the day before I turned 33. So <laughs> there's a lot of timing. The, yeah. some, something about this time of year and my birthday, like I met Doug on my birthday as well mm -hmm. when I was 39, my husband, who I also work with. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so I, um, didn't know what I was going to do mm -hmm. when I started my business. I had zero idea. <laughs> um, and I had been doing a lot of um, inner work and mm -hmm. self-awareness work and he you know emotional healing is when I started. That was 10 years ago, um, mm -hmm. probably 12 years, 13 years ago I started doing that work. Um, and that led me to be more aligned uh, with who I really am, mm -hmm. my true essence. And I couldn't function in corporate sales anymore so all I knew is I couldn't do what I was doing anymore <laughs> so I left with faith so um, I don't suggest everyone do that uh, if you <laughs> don't have a plan to make money but it all worked out for me <laughs> um, but yeah I didn't know what I was gonna do and I and I ended up becoming a journaling facilitator I trusted and actually that idea came to me um, with just uh, synchronicities and uh, in that 
is when we met. Mm -hmm. I went back to that. Uh, so for five years, I did a lot of things. We don't have the time for me to share about all those things I did in five years, but some of them included, um, well, I was always doing a lot of marketing mm -hmm. consulting work because I, I have a natural intuitive gift in actually internet marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so when I started my business, I was also helping holistic businesses uh, it was set up. That was 10 years ago. I was helping them set up newsletters and blogs and Facebook, which um, all was very new back then. And um, so I was always dividing my time with um, what I was good at and where I was at that time. So I was teaching journaling workshops and I was also a marketing consultant. And I did that for five years, even when I was in Thailand. I was a consultant for businesses and I was also a consultant four people. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and then when I got back to Atlanta um, in 2012 is when um, my life kind of, <laughs> I, I guess during the time in Thailand, that was my um, time of healing. It was mostly healing. It wasn't really growing my business. I was starting a lot of businesses and I started a lot of things that led me to success in my business then. Uh, but I wasn't doing it thinking it was going to lead me to success. I um, actually launched my YouTube channel, and this was a part of my like intuitive online <laughs> marketing <laughs> inspiration. So I was like, I need to get one of those new iPhones that have videos on them that can upload directly to YouTube. That would save me time uploading them from my computer. <laughs> and I was like, I just want to... I go, people can like hear information on videos <laughs> more than they can on reading a blog. And so I started um, just talking about my healing journey when I was in Thailand, but I didn't think, okay, these videos are gonna make me money. So it's like another tip is to um, do things out of, you know, from your inspiration mm -hmm. and from your heart. Um, and that will lead you to money. <laughs> Eventually, um, yeah. You know, many years later, those videos that I did in Thailand um, were how the majority of people found me. The majority of my clients over the years uh, found me by my YouTube videos. So, and still do sometimes. Yeah, and yeah. Facebook videos. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, so you know, I did a lot of things in Thailand. I got back to Atlanta. Um, and I was starting a new business, and um, I was in a relationship, kind of. <laughs> I wouldn't I call it a relationship. She I was, was in a something. I was in an old pattern, let me tell you that. I was in a big lesson. This was a whole other lesson that had to do with business, but it also had to do with my healing. Janet was along the along with the, with me during that ride, but I, I was in this something with this guy um, who was a marketing guru, and I thought, well, he knows more than I do, and so I was like, what should I do? I'm I'm starting over here in the U.S. and I need a new brand, and um, even though I was a branding intuitive branding mm. <laughs> consultant. <laughs> <laughs> um, I listened to him and he branded me and it was totally off track you know what I was saying to him what I wanted to do and what I'm good at he wasn't doing those things himself like self-awareness work mm -hmm. and so of course he couldn't um, see that I was good at that because he wasn't doing that himself anyway he got me off track <laughs> and then I um, got pregnant <laughs> which took totally took me off track <laughs> So I ended up um, about to launch this new brand, but I also found out I was pregnant and I wasn't in a relationship and I couldn't support myself and my life was like turned upside down. So um, I couldn't um, do anything and I couldn't uh, support anything. <laughs> I, didn't have a, I didn't have a car, I didn't have anything. So um, my friend took me in and I became her nanny. So this is um, to show that even after five years of being in business and um, you know trying to figure out what I was doing, I left. And, and in those other five years, I also had left um, doing what I was doing twice to wait tables just to um, do, do whatever I could to support myself. So a 
tip, and I know Janet has um, gone through the same thing, mm -hmm. um, is just it's okay wherever you are and if you have to do something, if you started a business and you have to do something that's not really what you know you want to do mm -hmm. or that you're really good at mm -hmm. um, and you're in this transition period while you're getting established in your business, mm -hmm. sometimes you just have to do like whatever is, um, is the best thing in yeah. the moment. Yeah, and, and even doing that, I'm just thinking about kind of in my journey, you know, I waited tables and bartended at when I was really starting my business, yeah. and I was barely surviving as a single mom. I mean, we were really struggling. I was having, I've talked about this before, a really hard time even paying my bills. It was very much like beat the bank at on the 30th of every month. And um, so, you know, one of the things was that I just wanted so badly to get out of the restaurant industry. I mean, I just was taking a toll on me energetically, physically. I wasn't getting to spend enough time with my son because I was working at nights. And there were all these things. And so I desperately wanted to get out. I actually took a leap of faith too early at one point, <laughs> and you probably remember that because I went shoom <laughs> and um and it was really hard but you know what happened was I was like okay you know what I'm not quite ready I thought maybe I was I'm not quite ready I'm not quite there and I like I went back to the restaurant and I, I worked it out to where I wasn't permanently on schedule. I could pick up shifts as I needed them. I kind of just worked with what my skill set and my connections were to get me back in there. And I was highly motivated at that point. I was very close. I knew I was really close to achieving what I wanted to achieve. Um, I just needed that like safety. I needed to know that the bills were getting paid. And I think that's something we see a lot in a lot of people who start businesses similar to ours is that they're not having the money coming in that's paying the bills and, and, and yet they don't really want to go do that and we totally get that. Mm -hmm. We totally get that but what happens is you end up struggling so much that you can get stuck in the pain of struggling. You can get stuck in the vibration of struggling. Yeah. And so part of what I think both of us realized was even when I had to go back to the restaurant, like I did not want to go back to the restaurant. But I was like, here's this opportunity. Like this is going to give me something that will help me feel safe that will help me feel strong so that I can, now I see what's missing and I can adjust things so that I can go in full force. And and then and it was very quick to turn around at that point, actually. Just answering mm -hmm. someone back on Facebook, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> um. So yeah, so I mean, I think that that's been a big thing for both of us and, and something that we've been looking at. I mean, we've taken a lot of, leap of leaps of faith even in our yeah. business like once we became established even yeah I want to definitely talk about mm -hmm. that um, what led me to when we met mm -hmm. um, was uh, so here I was mm -hmm. I, going back into my story with being pregnant um, I ended up being a nanny during that time and, mm -hmm. and I moved in with a friend and her family uh, and and then I ended up having a miscarriage and uh, and I was in a really bad place and I, I see now like thank God I was in this home you know with a family and all my needs were taken care of basically because I couldn't be able to support myself you know um, to deal with the pain that I was going through <laughs> uh, and this you know this has happened so many times so I um, we both have experienced this so many times that it's like if things aren't happening there's always a reason you know if you know there was a reason why you know I didn't um, live on my own and my business wasn't successful right away and all of this mm -hmm. was happening because it needed to happen mm -hmm. to get me you know to where I am now yeah. um, and so it, it does take a lot of um, just trust and faith and surrender that it's okay. It doesn't mean you're going backwards. I hear this yeah. from so many clients of mine. Mm -hmm. They're like, I just feel like I'm going backwards. Or if you think it, you met, um, if you think that if you are making enough money or you're successful means you're okay, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, don't equate that. Mm -hmm. Like all that matters is you be present to what you need to do in the moment and not, mm -hmm. um, and, and not think you're doing something wrong if things aren't happening because they don't, they're not mm -hmm. happening typically for a reason to help you in some way. Right, or if there's some sort of perceived failure, right? Yeah. Because I, what I have really come to understand is that everything that I, 
initially thought might have been a failure was actually like a gold mine of information. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like data. It's like here are the things that are not working. Here are the things you can tweak. Here's how this can do this. And then, and something that's been so awesome about having, and I really suggest that you find an Alicia, <laughs> <laughs> having this person that we really like. We were able to be vulnerable with each other along the way and say, oh my God, I did this thing and it didn't work and, or I need help or do you, can, can you take a look at this for me and really be open to what that person had to say, even if it hurt a little bit, you know, being able to be like, okay, like, you know what? She's got some insight. That's mm -hmm. really good for me. And it's, it can help me if I can get out of my own freaking way. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. And to reach out for support, mm -hmm. you know, to keep... Find someone <laughs> that can support you. And yeah. I do believe we all have um, soul contracts. Ours yeah. is very obvious. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, and, um, and yeah, to find that support and to continue to reach out for support to the right people. So with my example, with that, that guy, <laughs> I was reaching out to him and I was like, help me, help me, help me. And it was the wrong support because he mm -hmm. couldn't see me. And so he couldn't support me. And it, uh, it took me, you know, off, totally off track. Yeah. And um, every time I would go to him and listen to him and think and not listen to myself, then um, my money would stop and then I would go into these places where I felt like I needed him and I didn't know what I was doing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, when we met, <laughs> I, was, I, I was recovering from the miscarriage and I actually journaled and I was really, really depressed. I was um, uh, mourning and I wasn't, living um, where I wanted to live. I didn't want to live with people and I was just in a bad place and I journaled and I said, what do I need to do? And um, I was like kind of automatic writing and it was like teach journaling. Mm -hmm. So going back to basics, mm -hmm. you know, what, where, I, where did I begin? Mm -hmm. um, and where did, it's like go back to what you know that you're good at, that you enjoy. And so it always went back to journaling. Like I love connecting mm -hmm. people to themselves and I'm really good at helping people see their potential and um, see the blocks mm -hmm. of, um, and what, what they need and, and to like give that to themselves. Um, and so journaling was one easy way to do that. So it was just like, oh, I just need to teach journaling again. And then, then I was felt connected again to myself. Mm -hmm. So anytime I had business ideas that were like, oh, people need this, mm -hmm. so um, I'll create this business for people, but it really wasn't um, my gift, like to see like an opportunity, mm -hmm. it would it would take me off track. I, I actually spent all my money, you know, thinking of like building wellness directories because it was needed, <laughs> but like that wasn't my gift. And so um, in that, you know, I, I eventually like filed bankruptcy for doing that but of course that led me to moving to Thailand and all that stuff so yeah, yeah. so when we met <laughs> I started um, helping Janet build her business because I was still living in um, where I was supporting and doing marketing and branding work to holistic mm -hmm. practitioners um, and I was also um, working with people and coaching them Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so we started doing, we did some work together. She was helping me. Then we started trading. Yes. Yes. That's when the magic really started. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That um, was really awesome. Yes. Yeah, so if you can find someone, um, and I don't recommend trading. Um, no, not always. <laughs> I don't, I don't recommend trading cause I, I got myself into, um, it was kind of like somewhat prostitution area mm -hmm. when I was um, needing something and then I would trade serve I would trade my services but then I would get something that I didn't need and it just gets really sticky sometimes yeah, or, or I would pr I traded my like marketing services to promote someone that I didn't actually believe in mm -hmm. and it gets a little sticky. Yeah, so. I think with trading and that's something too that has been interesting the bartering situation is that there's a lot of levels to it and making sure that it feels really clean and all of that is definitely one of them. 
in our case, we yeah. were both pretty broke at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and we were also still very much living in some wounds. Yeah. Which is really interesting. So we met at a time, I mean, right before we did, both did. I mean, our experiences, our lives, even before we knew each other, were, have been very parallel in a lot of ways. And right after we met one another, without knowing that we were doing this, we both did some really, really deep emotional work. Mm -hmm. And that was when things really started shifting for me. And that's basically the stuff that we were doing at the time is what Alicia eventually took the seed of that and turned it into her core emotional healing program, which is amazing because the shifts that happened for both of us afterwards were huge. They were so empowering. And those were the things for me that really helped me to see and understand my value, to work with my value, to hire the people that could support me in putting myself out there and so forth and so on. Yeah. And I, um, at that time when I did my core emotional healing, uh, with my inner child, uh, that shifted everything for me. Mm -hmm. um, I totally shut the door on that guy mm -hmm. and um, and then met Doug and mm -hmm. he was also the biggest support um, that I needed to you know feel supported and um, I also from that work trusted my intuition and I believed in myself. Mm -hmm. uh, so then from that point on I felt really connected to my own guidance and followed that in my intuition. Um, so, uh, the, <laughs> um, when we met and we started working together about the trading, uh, I wanted to also say like, if you do find someone, um, trading works and it worked for us, um, because we both, needed what each other was yeah. offering. So at that time, um, I was helping Janet um, build her business. Mm -hmm. So you want to share about where you were? Yeah, so I was, um, you know, I was very much a wounded healer at the time. Um, and I, I didn't understand business at all. Um, and I didn't understand marketing and I had just gone to health coaching school, which was interesting and good. I went to the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, but I, I didn't really want to be a health coach. I just kept trying to learn things um, because I thought if I learn enough, then maybe I'll be able to, I don't know, like. <laughs> so that's a common pattern. That's a common pattern. Yeah. With, um, <laughs> and so we'll talk about wounded child throughout mm -hmm. because um, I also, a common pattern of wounded child can look like um, always wanting to um, get certified mm -hmm. and learn more because at the core you your wounded child doesn't feel good enough and needs mm -hmm. to prove yes. that you're okay um, and my wounded child showed up when I was in Thailand and I needed everyone to need me and to you know I, I knew the most mm -hmm. and I um, think everyone needed me and that can also look like yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and so mine was like keep studying keep studying and then I had like right before I met Alicia I had an epiphany like wow, like why am I learning yet another thing when I already have something that I've been doing for like eight years at the time that I love? And really it was because I was afraid to step into that thing that I loved. I was so afraid that I wouldn't be good enough at it and I wouldn't, no. And, and the learning kept me from having to really step into that place. It was like, oh, I'm learning something new, but it always went on and on. So, um, she was, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, and I remember um, when Janet was going to my marketing play shops, mm -hmm. uh, so I was helping entrepreneurs who were just starting business or wanted to um, discover their unique brand mm -hmm. and, um, and tell your empowering story <laughs> that proves that you, you know, have something to offer without needing um, a lot of certifications or trainings mm -hmm. or, um, you know, letters behind your name, after your name. So... Janet was like, well, what, how do I incorporate the, um, the health coaching? Mm -hmm. And I was like, you don't, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what you do. Yeah. And I don't do it at all. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. So yeah, and so it was like this this process. And some of the things that Alicia like um, that she really supported me with early on, in addition to kind of some of the logistics of marketing and branding, were one, she was like, "You need to charge more money for what you're doing." Like she's like, "You're so good. You're such a powerful." I said healer. I said a number that you eventually reached <laughs> like years later. Years later, <laughs> I know. I was like, "You're worth this yeah. amount," and then she was yeah. like, "Which was so." Oh my God. Um, it, was, it was like double what you were charging. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was, it took me a while to stretch into that, but it showed me that here was somebody who knew a lot about this industry and had tried every modality under the sun. And she like believed in what I was doing. And so that really helped me to understand my worth. And the other thing that Alicia showed me, oh my God, what she was like, you need to do <laughs> distance sessions. And I was like, they work that much with distance healing and she's like well just do it practice it she's like here's the name of a friend <laughs> reach out to him <laughs> and I was like okay I was like practice on me yeah. and then I was like I like that better than your in-person sessions and I never did an in-person session ever again she has I, was like, I know she lives I was like this me. is so valuable and yeah I know we live right near each other I was like this is so valuable oh my god yeah and that was really I mean that was such a pivotal point in my in my career and my business was that I opened up to that and was willing to do it even though it was uncomfortable I looking back I'm like why was it even uncomfortable like I love remote work now so much and um but it was it was and so I I mean I was like willing to listen to her and be like okay well she has some insight here and I'm gonna give it a shot and I did and it was scary at first, and it was super scary the first time I recorded one of them. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> they were always perfect. Janet's readings are like pure and accurate and so helpful. I gotta tell this story. Um, I, I ha I'm also very intuitive. Mm -hmm. I just um, can say what's needed. Mm -hmm. I can just see what's needed or mm -hmm. what the person um, is. <laughs> their possibilities are what's behind all the defenses <laughs> exactly um and and so um i wanted to tell you um one reading one of the first readings janet did and i think that might have been oh that was one of the last in-person ones i went to mm -hmm. maybe um so after i started doing the um journaling workshops and, and things i was getting my feet back on the ground um all of a sudden the friend that I was living with <laughs> kicked me out <laughs> suddenly and I had nowhere to go and I had no money so I was literally homeless and <laughs> so if it's anyone knows who I, <laughs> what my life is like now <laughs> anything's possible for you you could even be homeless yes. and have a very successful career and you know mm. love of your life and <laughs> <laughs> fabulous life anyway so I was um, sleeping on a couch of one of our friends and um, and I was like okay I just need to um, find a place I, I just need a room to rent because I had no furniture I had just moved back from Thailand <laughs> I um, so I gave away everything that I owned when I moved to Thailand so when I moved back I just had two suitcases so I had no money and I had no furniture and no place to live and I was like okay I just need to find a room that I could sublet for like one month <laughs> and then I had um, a, a healing session with Janet and during her healing sessions she um, sends messages from my guides and um, so my guide Theo, <laughs> Theo is the man. He was he's like, guy. he's like, you need to stop being, <laughs> and uh, he said, you need to stop being so narrow focused and, and expand your view. So come up from the narrow focus of what you're looking at right now and expand like a bird and see that it's all possible and you can have it now. And I was like, all right. <laughs> Willing to listen. I was like, okay, so no resistance. I was like, I can have it all right now. Okay, um, I hear you. It must be possible if Theo said it. 
So I um, went to Radio Cafe. I remember that's where she just came back from <laughs> on her way over here. And I like had my computer and I posted on Facebook and I said, okay, I'm ready for my fully furnished corner loft, which was what I used to have before I went to Thailand. I just love those spaces are so inspiring. I was like fully furnished corner, bright window, you know, like lined with windows loft. <laughs> And right after that, a guy um, messaged me and he's like, I'm looking to rent my fully furnished <laughs> corner loft. Corner loft. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Theo was right. <laughs> they usually know. <laughs> so, and, and, I, and so it was interesting, and this has happened so many times. If I went to the limits, like of like, I just need a room because that's all I have right now then it wasn't gonna get me to what I needed. Because actually what I needed was a space where I could record videos, which I was doing that, and I was doing these marketing play shops and holding workshops, and, and so I was like, I needed my own space. I couldn't mm -hmm. have done my business in that room that I rented. So um, I made it happen. Like all of a sudden money came, mm -hmm. um, enough for one month. And of course this guy was super nice and I didn't have to do like security deposit or anything like that. And it was mm -hmm. just like, just give me this and you can move in tomorrow. And he was desperate and you know, that's how it worked. Yeah. And then I, um, instantly got into this new, like, um, space of like anything's possible and I can have it and this is what I'm going to create. And then it started, I started attracting like clients like, uh, that was paying more than I needed and mm -hmm. um yeah so yeah that was <laughs> awesome <laughs> and then another reading I had from you I was doing all those marketing play shops and um and I was doing private coaching clients and um and I was writing um, my book my first a book which is an ebook detox 101 and I was like doing all this stuff and I was creating a directory and that directory idea I was in that I know I'm done with the directory it was kind of like the piece of me the codependent part of me that just wanted to help other people and I was taking away from what you know the gifts that I had to give yeah. Um, and so I was creating all this stuff and one of my readings, Janet said, um, the guys were like, if you uh, continue doing all of this stuff, you're going to continue needing to detox. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so true. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm killing myself. Oh. Like I was really killing myself. So I stopped doing all the marketing work that I was doing and just focused on coaching clients mm -hmm. and it, oh, it was so good. And you know, doing, that's another part of the um, wounded child as well, mm -hmm. like thinking that you need to do more because there's not enough. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, you know, was still, you know, working on that piece of trusting um, that there's, there's more than enough and I'm going to get what I need. Um, and I can trust myself to do that. And I, it doesn't have, and I don't have to kill myself or give up my needs to do it. That's something that I think you and I have been really, really supportive of one another with too, is helping each other see where our boundaries are loose or weak or when mm -hmm. we're overgiving or we're, you know, we've, that's something that's been so, especially in these professions that we're in and that a lot of the people that we work with are in, I mean, we're all healers and there's a part of us that is just always wanting to go out, 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 out. And I think, I know that you and I both, we've gone back and forth of like, you know, this is where you got to pull in or that's what you need or you need some more rest or you're doing too much and yeah it's been really beautiful to be able to have that reflected back mm -hmm. um in a loving way yeah 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 <laughs> so what else have you <laughs> <laughs> what else happened since then <laughs> oh my god well then like a year after that was when we started working and oh in wait coaching. oh before then i wanted to, i'm going to continue sharing how amazing janet is <laughs> Um, so it's so interesting. So what we do has helped us so much professionally. And I don't think yeah. we talk about that that much. Yeah, like we don't. What Janet does in her readings, um, in her healings, um, 
also like I've gone to her every time I felt stuck in my business so and mm -hmm. I, I haven't really talked about that because I send my clients to Janet who are healing um, and, and need more like the the physical emotional mm -hmm. um, healing from traumas and things like that but um, she's also very good at um, you know decisions with anything and mm -hmm. including um, what needs to happen and um, and what's going to happen so she um, after that I felt stuck like um, after I started coaching and I was doing um, focused on candida coaching at that time and it was going well um, and she I did a reading I was like I don't know where I'm going with this and she actually saw um, <laughs> that I would be doing uh, group work online through video <laughs> and if anyone knows me that's all I do <laughs> that's my entire business <laughs> I have multiple programs of group programs um, mm -hmm. and now I'm, I'm launching a certification program that's all online as mm -hmm. well in, in group in a group <laughs> setting on video so at that time though that's the other tricky thing mm -hmm. with sometimes psychic readings mm -hmm. that are so accurate but so far <laughs> I was like I can't do that. That scares the shit out of me. <laughs> I couldn't even do like a, a conference call like over the phone at that time. I was like, oh my God, no, no. Um, I don't know. So I totally like forgot about that. And then I felt this need to change um, what I was doing. And I was like, I just can't do what I'm doing anymore. And I, I missed the marketing work and I missed being in a, an environment where there was like a team environment. I was like, I think I'm going to go into um, corporate wellness. I think I had an opportunity come my way mm -hmm. where someone asked me to do some coaching in the corporate setting. And I was like, oh yeah, I kind of miss being involved in this. And um, so I checked in with Janet during a healing and she said, yeah, you could do that. And, and it feels really good for you to do this right now um, because you could use all of your skills like you can be in the health field and you can use your marketing and sales and all this all those things I was like oh yeah that totally makes sense and um, she said and you could also do the candida coaching and it'll be really successful which <laughs> she saw like what was coming I think yeah. as well um, so I ended up leaving um, what I was doing because I needed that break it was so needed so again for any of you who where what you're doing isn't working right now or isn't what you want you know what you think it should be and you're thinking about doing something else it does not mean you're going backwards mm -hmm. um, you know our past like I you know there's detours there's mm -hmm. u-turns there's <laughs> spirals, <laughs> there's spirals. <laughs> you're never going backwards but it's all leading and adding up yeah. to you know to where you need to go um, yeah. So just trust, even if it's not what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the thing that Janet and I, um, you know, have always had. It was like, it, we weren't stuck in why isn't this happening. Mm -hmm. Both Janet and I would just say, okay, what is needed right now? And yeah. it didn't mean anything about us. Like, it didn't mean that we're, something's wrong with us or mm -hmm. we're doing it wrong. Um, so yeah, I did um, almost a year no, it wasn't even. Yeah, it was almost a year, maybe mm -hmm. 10 months in corporate. I was uh, the director of sales for um, a corporate health company. And and then I all of a sudden, um, I still had my website up and people would, would still contact me for sessions. And then I had a session <laughs> and it was like, oh, I really <laughs> miss this. I miss my heart work. So then it was clear to me that I that I needed to do that and um, I had just married Doug and I was like I'm going to totally rebrand and with my married name Alicia Miller and uh, and I just knew exactly what I needed and um, in terms of like my brand and I even knew I, I'm very intuitive with, <laughs> with marketing especially and like my tagline came to me before I was even doing it mm -hmm. but it was like your symptoms are a gift and it's you know the book I'm writing and everything and even Doug um, my husband was like oh that doesn't make any sense people won't be attracted <laughs> to that <laughs> and at this point I had do done so much inner work and I was like it doesn't matter what he said mm -hmm. I was like 
nope it's what I it's it's me yep that's yep that's what I need even though it, it made more sense later on and and so um, even though um, I started off doing it and I um, I I was like I need I ended up rebranding um, Alicia Miller to just focus on Candida even though I started off branding it what I'm doing now I was like your symptoms are a gift there's messages from the body each symptom has a meaning and that's what I help them address is you know more of the emotional um, cause of the physical symptom and, and then I was like oh but everyone's coming to me for Candida it needs to be more specific and so I'll just do Candida <laughs> and, and, and other people are like you just need to have something very specific which I should have just listened to myself in the beginning <laughs> but um yeah, and then I um, I was on this pregnancy journey, and uh, I actually contacted someone to help me with my business. It was just she's a business coach um, out in San Francisco, and and I was like, what can I do to set up myself up because um, I'm gonna have a baby. I think I was pregnant at the time. And um, I ended up having multiple miscarriages for anyone who doesn't know. And we do not have a baby now, nor do we want one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so everything happened as it should. But I contacted her and I was like, what, what can I do to set myself up to have a baby and to have my business thriving and growing? And she's like, you have to do group work. And it's so interesting because I wasn't thinking of what Janet said, <laughs> you know, a couple years prior. I was like, okay, group work. And she just taught me how to kind of create a group program. Mm -hmm. And so I created a, you know, eight week group program for Candida, which is now my Candida home study, mm -hmm. uh, which I've been using for years and it's been very useful. And so it was just like, I reached out for support for whatever was needed at the time for mm -hmm. that one step. And then it helped and then it led me to the next step was like oh I'll create a three-month group program and then around that time um, <laughs> I knew I was ready to really grow my business because I felt like I had the structure in place mm -hmm. and the programs in place and I, and I was ready to like launch the candida home study as a home study and also do more group work because I really enjoyed it mm -hmm. and um, and then I knew I needed a business coach like that uh, could take me to the next level and that's um, when Janet and I went to uh, a business um, coaches seminar like a one-day seminar and then we went to her weekend um, mm -hmm. like conference event yeah yeah and and <laughs> we were um, we were there, and it was really inspiring. And um, Alicia was like, "I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to do this." And I was like, "I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money." <laughs> but it looks really good. And um, Alicia signed up, and she totally knew. Like she was like, "This is it. This is what I need." Blah blah blah. I didn't have the money either. I actually she didn't. <laughs> going back to bankruptcy, so I had filed bankruptcy like six years prior or something, mm -hmm. and um, so I was really against credit, but it, I just knew that's what was gonna, that's mm -hmm. what I needed to take me to the next level, and um, put it on a credit card. Um, first time I used credit cards. Anyway, and then, yeah. yeah. So, um, on the last day, you know, Alicia was like, you really need to do this, Janet. Like, you, you're ready for it. And I was like, I just don't know how I'm going to do it. I can't imagine paying that much money, blah, blah, blah. You know, and Alicia's like, so, she's a master at seeing through defenses. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, she wouldn't have it. <laughs> she was like, you need to do this with me. And I think you sent me up to Monica. I, I did. Talk to her. <laughs> I was like, you're going to talk to Monica. <laughs> I go over there and um, I'm like I don't know what to do and Monica like put her um, hands on my shoulders and like looked at my face and she was like you're ready <laughs> I was like okay and like so we both really took that leap of faith together and it was scary as hell but um but we did it and and it, and it was beautiful like immediately like immediately everything happened to like fall into place with it but we were ready for that leap like we really mm. truly were you know and um and it and it felt like wow we were being met and held in this and that was a huge turning point for both of us yeah yeah, yeah. and it, it gave us um so you started you actually made 
much more money that first month. To Before we even started the program. Oh, yeah. like to, officially to cover started, the cost yeah. of the program that month and more. Yeah. Um, and I started making a lot more money mm -hmm. immediately as well. And it gave us the community mm -hmm. and the ongoing support. Yeah. Um, and also the belief to, and, and that we can take more and more risks. So mm -hmm. shortly after that, I think it was like a month later, um, one of my clients who was referred originally from Janet mm -hmm. in <laughs> Costa Rica um, goes, uh, why don't you, it, like the mm -hmm. Candida Home Study made such a big difference for mm -hmm. her. She said, why don't you come to Costa Rica and do a retreat? And then I talked to Janet about it and Janet's like, oh, I'm just Miss Costa Rica. And I was like, I miss doing retreats because I used to do retreats in Thailand and she used to live in Costa Rica. So we're like, let's do a retreat. Mm -hmm. We just were like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. And so I think us being in that like supportive group environment in the coaching program um, yeah. helped us like believe that we, we can do anything. Mm -hmm. And so, um, <laughs> and I listened to my intuition because that coach actually said, well, in order to fill it, you're going to have to call people. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to get business online. <laughs> and I'm... Um, you know, and this is going to happen and this mm -hmm. is how we're going to do it. We didn't call anyone and we sold it out in two weeks. Yeah. We didn't even know what we were doing yet <laughs> on the retreat. <laughs> so a lot of people say, uh, oh God, I wish I could do retreats. I don't know how to do retreats. And we didn't either. Yeah, like, we didn't. Mm -mm. <laughs> we had someone that found a place for us mm -hmm. <laughs> and it wasn't perfect and it, you know, um, but it was, you know, it worked. It worked. And yeah. um, it was so powerful. It changed what I was doing in business. That first mm -hmm. retreat, it, we didn't make, I think we like broke even mm -hmm. and we learned a lot of lessons. A lot um, of lessons. And it was really, really impactful, you know, for most everyone mm -hmm. that was there. And then we grew professionally and, yeah. and actually changed the way I was doing business because I actually mm -hmm. saw what it took for the emotional work of a group going mm -hmm. through the process together. Um, but I, I ended up doing that much later um, mm -hmm. and created the core emotional healing process from that. Um, but I also saw that what was needed, it wasn't the focus on the food anymore. Mm -hmm. I was like, what changed, what shifted everyone was the emotional work. Yeah. And what was needed was to start with the emotional work. Mm -hmm. uh, and so be, until, um, people have that connection to their inner child and they start to take care of themselves on an emotional level. It, it's um, people struggle with self-sabotaging and emotional yeah. eating and just emotional patterns and all of that. Yeah. So. And I don't know that even like early on, like when we both did our core emotional healing work, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know about you, but I did not really put it all together. I didn't go like, oh, this is the thing that changed. It was in retrospect when I looked back that I was like, oh my God, this is when everything changed. Yeah. And what changed was that, and this is what Alicia does now. I mean, and it's powerful. I refer so many people to her because when we're stuck, what we're stuck in is those past traumas, those past limiting beliefs, the past hurts. And the thing that can get us out of that is to express the emotions that we weren't able to share in that time. And so what we weren't able to, the anger and the resentment and the sadness and the grief and all the stuff that we had to suppress in order to survive in many cases, um, it, it needs to find expression. And so once it does find expression, well, then the like for me it was like I I could start expressing myself and I felt my worth and I was able to stand up for myself and I felt like wow like I really like I believed in myself more and then when we started when we did that retreat and it was like we were able to see these shifts that happened mm -hmm. immediately yeah and when she when she works with people and especially you know there are a lot of women that I see coming right out of her program who've really applied themselves to it mm -hmm. who like mm -hmm. that's like a complete 180 yeah shift out of mm -hmm. suffering like symptoms yeah. and relationships and yeah. um you know the family ties that bind mm -hmm. and pull and keep people stuck and then it's like yeah. no this is you know what i want and, and i can have it yeah and including you know we work with a lot of clients um 
uh, privately that are, you know, we share that a lot of the same clients mm -hmm. who also go on our retreat and we've worked with many entrepreneurs mm -hmm. who are entrepreneurs now that they weren't right. <laughs> or they were in, they were working for someone and then they mm -hmm. started their own business mm -hmm. um, sh shortly after our retreat. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, it made a mm -hmm. huge impact on how I was able to hold myself as a business owner, as a professional, how I was able to hold space in my career, like the inner strength that comes from that is really powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to, um, for anyone who's watching live, we are, we are doing, um, we're having an offering for mm -hmm. New Year's. So we'd love to hear your um, New Year's intentions. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll share ours uh, shortly mm -hmm. as well. But um, if you write uh, your New Year's intention, just one word in the comment, and you also like both of our Facebook pages, and um, if you share this video, you'll be entered into um, a giveaway. So if there's just a, you know, depending on how many people there are that do that, <laughs> you could be one of the winners. <laughs> We're giving away um, um, our two to two people. So we'll select two people based on the cri criteria is actually listed in the description mm -hmm. of this video. So you can reference that um, and go ahead and write your New Year's intention. And we will select, if you're selected, one of our favorite uh, essential oils and we'll ship it to you that will support your New yep. Year's intention. <laughs> That's an awesome gift. Yeah, <laughs> we um, we love essential oils, and I love mm -hmm. and I also um, love Bach flower remedies and flower remedies. I love um, plants and the mm -hmm. vibration of plants to support um, healing and grounding. And Janet uses them in her healings, mm -hmm. and I recommend them um, in the core emotional healing process um, for so many reasons. But we also use them, you know, for. Every for everything. <laughs> I used them right before this. We <laughs> used them right before this. I use them. We use them for energy and clarity and um, yeah. yeah. And so we use those on our retreat as well, yeah. Janet and I. So we shared about the first retreat we mm -hmm. did, and um, we are now on our sixth retreat. In yes. Costa Rica, <laughs> uh, we ended up um, finding a place on the, on our third retreat mm -hmm. that was absolutely perfect for us. Mm -hmm. um, it's called the Retreat, um, and you can see it. You can check it out it, um, on our website, sacredemotionretreat.com. You can see the pictures of the retreat. Um, it is the best Amazing. place. <laughs> it really is the best retreat. Yeah. I was re um, researching retreats mm -hmm. and. Thailand for many many years and mm -hmm. um, many many years it seems like <laughs> seems like many many years it was like three years I was, I was researching um, retreats many years ago mm -hmm. um, for three years and seriously like the retreat in Costa Rica um, is is my favorite one because of like the energy and the service uh, the food and just how you feel there is perfect for the work that we do there. It's so nourishing. Yeah. So, so, so nourishing. I just saw Melissa posted her intention. She's expecting abundance. I love that. No. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. So yeah, so the retreat is like, it's on a quartz mountain. It's like completely like nestled in its own little space. So there's nobody else around and the food is like the best ever mm. and it is so perfect. The rooms the are rooms, just The beds, beautiful. oh my God. <laughs> I don't know how to get one of those beds back in my, in my suitcase. It's so, <laughs> it's so, um, it's so nurturing mm -hmm. and that's the work that we do. Yeah. And, you know, I, um, help you and all of my clients, um, nurture and learn how to nurture um, themselves mm -hmm. and their emotions and their emotional needs, mm -hmm. uh, their inner child. That's the, the vulnerable part of us that mm -hmm. didn't typically get nurtured. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> until you do it yourself, mm -hmm. there's just a lot of suffering. Yeah. Um, so my clients, after they do the core emotional work, then they feel like, oh, everything's okay. Yeah. Uh, and they and you can slow down and then you can listen more and you can respond to what you need more. Yeah. And Janet's work um, is also nour nourishing and nurturing as well mm -hmm. of just like feeling seen and knowing what you need and feeling supported. Um, and yeah. Janet's 
amazing. <laughs> so is Alicia. Oh, we love each other so much. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, you know, we, um, another, the, I guess one of the last um, growth lessons um, in terms of like making a huge decision. We both did that again um, a year, wait, when was it? No. Seven months ago. Seven months ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seven months ago. Yeah. Um, I was not working with a coach at that time and um I I had all my new programs going and things were going pretty good. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, okay, I know what I'm doing. Um, this is working better than anything um thus far. I'm getting the best results with my clients. I know I want to write a book and I know eventually I'll do a certification program because I was uh have, there's a lot of demand uh, for people to learn the process that I developed and and I was like but I don't have I knew who I wanted to hire which is Jen Mazer to be my business coach to help me do those things but I was like I'm not ready yet you know and I said I don't have the money yet I don't have you know um, I, I don't think I, I'm ready to write a book yet and all this stuff. I like and what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I like what I'm doing. <laughs> Things are working. Yeah. So if you've recognized that in yourself, <laughs> I don't have the money. Things are working. <laughs> um, and then Jen is like, finally, I found a me. <laughs> I hadn't met a me in my entire life where someone could see me and, and actually show me what's possible. Like she was the first one who saw me, my potential, what I normally do mm -hmm. for other people. And she said, you, you know, could, this is needed. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is needed now um, to train therapists and to do this deeper work and to have people... Uh, move into this that are get feeling stuck in their work mm -hmm. and and so I was like okay you're right I'm just gonna trust again <laughs> and we've gotten used to that like yeah. it doesn't financially make sense <laughs> but I'm gonna trust it's gonna work out yeah and, and it has <laughs> we both um, hired Jen at the same mm -hmm. time and immediately again mm -hmm. <laughs> after like the first month um, all of a sudden everything shifted in my business and all of these new ideas came. I was like, oh, this is, po oh, this is what I need. Oh, this is possible. Yeah. And then we were like, we are ready to hire an assistant. And it was something that Janet and I talked about for two years. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, we know we need help, but, but we can do it. I don't know what they would, I can't believe, we're both really embarrassed. I that know, we, it seems so, like silly, like looking back, like I cannot believe the things we said. <laughs> we would both say, but what would they do for us? <laughs> and we're laughing because. We're laughing. And if Rachel watches this, oh my God, she would be laughing too. <laughs> she never runs out of things to do for us. We're like all day, every day, do this, do this, and do this. <laughs> so the hiring, so you know, hiring an assistant was a huge game changer yeah. for both of us. It was like, oh, we finally can um, get a lot done and do yeah. what we're really good at, and actually put out, you know, programs and do new things and launches and mm -hmm. this and that, and everything's possible because of support. So mm -hmm. that's another thing is support everything's possible when you have the right support. Absolutely. We yeah. had the right support with, you know, Jen Mazur mm -hmm. um, and with Rachel. <laughs> and, you know, even my husband, um, mm -hmm. Doug, it was uh, what I needed as well. He mm -hmm. always saw, you know, my potential, even though he didn't understand why I kept changing my business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least I needed him to just see who I am and he would acknowledge that. And because mm -hmm. of our similar line of work, he would help me and his mm -hmm. um, background and training has um, complimented me in putting together the model as well. So I had support from um, the business, from the business side with Jen and also the business side with Doug and also the business side with Rachel <laughs> and, and with Janet. Like, and I have a bigger team than that too. I also mm -hmm. have um, other uh, people on my team that help me with marketing and guidance and SEO and website design and all of that. Yeah. So it does take 
you know, a lot of support. So I rec we, you know, I, from our experience, it's best to build it when you're ready. And, and when you think you're not ready <laughs> and you have something that's ready mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and you have the right support to trust that as yeah. well. Yeah, I was really, I think there was a big part of me that was afraid to give up the control in that. And, but once I did, like, it's actually unbelievable how much more I can create. How much more you don't want to do. And how much, <laughs> and how much, honestly, how much more I don't want to do. I'm like, oh, Rachel can do this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she can probably do it way, way, it, way better than I, I can. I forgot how to do things already. <laughs> I know. I was like, I was like, how do I put together a newsletter? <laughs> It's so awesome. Yeah, it had to be there. <laughs> um, anyway, so now, um, you know, Jana and I, it's like everything is, is possible um, because of the support and because of the inner work and because we continue to do it as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's it, my, my word this year is actually uh, something that's so commonly used and obvious because I'm working with the queen of manifestation, <laughs> but my word for 2018 is manifest because I have done everything I need to do and it's ready to get out there. Mm -hmm. So I am fully supported in um, actually doing it now, like getting the certification program out there. It's starting in April. Um, I'm training practitioners. I have a practitioner training um, that, you know, for practitioners only, coaches and therapists to go through the program first. Mm -hmm. That's starting January 3rd. If you um, want to join, there's still some spaces available. Um, and then the certification program starts in April. And, um, and I've totally changed my business, I had to stop doing what I was doing, which was also scary um, because it's, I still have people wanting to join these programs and I'm saying no, and you're going to have to be put on a wait list for the people who are, who I'm training. That's a huge transition and um, mm -hmm. act of, you know, trust mm -hmm. that I'm actually turning away business mm -hmm. um, in order for for the big picture to happen. So yeah. in order, for, I cannot continue to support that many people mm -hmm. through it and this needs to go out there in a bigger way. So that's why I switched and I stopped taking clients and I'm only supporting practitioners because that way this work is going to get there out there in a bigger way. Yeah. So it's like, okay, this is happening. It's going to, you know, I'm manifesting that I'm manifesting. So manifestation, it's not that I'm like, Oh, well, you know, I visualize <laughs> this and it's going to happen. Manifestation is, um, this is the manifestation of my life's work. This is the manifestation of my 10 years of everything that I've ever done. You know, every lesson I've learned, every, you know, thing that I've seen that was needed and what was needed in the order and everything that we've done. It's man, it's time to manifest that. And so that's why, you know, I, and in my book, it's like, I know what to write now. It's now is the time. Mm -hmm. And on the side, on a side note, <laughs> <laughs> I just had a reading with Vasumi, who's amazing Mayan astrologer. And um, she's, there's 13 years in, the, in a Mayan cycle. And I'm in my 10th year, <laughs> which is my 10th. Um, you're in business. I was like, of course I'm in my 10th yeah. year. And she said, my 10th year is manifest. Uh, it's the year of manifestation. And I was like, of course it of is. Of course it is. And then I found out that it's Jen Mazur's too. I'm like, of course it is. <laughs> and then she said, oh, and your sign is all about timing. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, I think probably something that you guys can all glean from what we've been talking about is that it wasn't always easy. I think part of our ability to have successful careers, like to have built to where we are now, is that we have been willing and able to step outside of our comfort zones over and over and over again and haven't been afraid to ask for help as we've been as we've been doing it. And um, I think that's just so important. It is. Um, my word, my intention for the new year. Oh, and I want to thank you guys for sharing yours yeah. also. And I'm I so, yeah, excited to read them all. <laughs> yeah, I know. It would yeah. be really cool. So if anyone hasn't, mm -hmm. if you just joined, mm -hmm. make sure to read the description of this video because we're um, giving away, uh, we're picking two mm -hmm. winners and there's some things for you to do. So make sure to comment um, your 
uh, word for 2018. Yes. Okay. So mine is generosity. And it's so interesting because I was just telling Alicia before we started talking, I was like, when it came in, I was like, that's interesting. Like generosity. Because your first thought of Janet is like, she's so generous. She supports so many people. Like, that was my first thought. I was like, you're so generous. So yeah, I really had to like kind of sit with it for a while and be like, what does this mean for me? And and, and, you know, part of it is understanding generosity to self as well. And it's, it's taking generosity, taking it from kind of, um, from a, from a two dimensional perspective and, and, and reaching into some other areas with it. And so something that really keeps coming up to me is kind of like, well, how can I, how can I be more loving and more noticing of people? How can I be more present for people and, and be more available to them in, in listening and also without sacrificing myself in that. So how can I find that dance that balance? And for me, that's what I'll really be working with this year is, is how can I understand that flow of generosity, which is like the law of reciprocity, which is giving and receiving, giving and receiving, and really understanding that rhythm for myself. Yeah. That um, is also why um, launching the certification program was mm. to be more generous but in order to be more generous yeah. i had to pull back my support because i cannot support as many people as i was um while you know there's only so much of me so i'm creating the mm -hmm. certification program to support more people with this work and so for that transitional period mm -hmm. i had to pull back my support which is really hard mm -hmm. for me to you know do i don't like to leave people you know without <laughs> the support that they need but um i had yeah. to do that in order to provide the support that more people need yeah. um so that's great um also that reminded me of like sometimes it may seem like you're being less generous to people but you're actually being more generous right um you know in different ways in the bigger yeah. picture the bigger picture okay. yeah exactly yeah Absolutely. Um, so do you want to talk about, so, you know, we've talked a lot about our journeys mm -hmm. today and I think just to summarize what helped the most, um, is the support mm -hmm. <laughs> It was like over Hopefully. and over and over. <laughs> um, and, and also, you know, taking risks and doing things, um, and trusting, mm -hmm. um, and getting the right support and doing the inner work, um, you know, and um, and having mentors and coaches and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and the community aspect of that first coaching program really made a huge different for, difference for us. Yeah. Um, and I know that's a huge part of all of my programs is mm -hmm. the group programs and the community. And you're launching a new group program yes. <laughs> that starts next week as well. It does, yes. It starts on the 1st, um, but enrollment's open until the 5th. Our first live meeting is on the 7th, so a week from Sunday. And it's an everyday spirituality program. So, and I'm super, super excited about it. Um, I've been like having so much fun planning it. So it's really a way to um, create a community and support um, us in um, having everyday spirituality. How can we be more open, more intuitive, more aligned, more in flow with our connection to spirit? How can we create the sacred space and how can we take that sacred space out into the world with us? How can we really find that connection, sustain that connection and feel that connection even in the most uncomfortable moments? Um, and then how can, you know, giving you all the tools and the, um, inspiration to be able to do it even beyond that course because I think for a lot of us finding that and it doesn't ha it's going to look different for every single person you know for one person it's meditating an hour in the morning but for another person it might be you know having these different set points throughout the day or a different type of connection or pulling cards or and I think giving finding that way finding what is right for you and then being able to so that you can maintain it because yeah. you have to love it you have to be aligned from with it you have to feel like you're receiving from it in order to continue with it and so I'm super excited about doing that and creating the community and I've got so much good stuff <laughs> just coming together Janet's the best guy <laughs> as well to help you connect to what you specifically mm -hmm. need um, and the community aspect is so important yeah. to feel supported and to feel mm -hmm. connected and that you're you know that yeah you have 
someone there that's yeah. always there for you when you need them and mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's, it's awesome. so powerful i know so talk about your program well i did <laughs> that's true um, but we can talk about our retreat <laughs> yes. because um my program mm -hmm. and janet's program <laughs> the combination <laughs> of that is what we do on um, our retreat yes. so we shared about the retreat space and mm -hmm. how um perfect it is for the mm -hmm. deeper emotional healing work that's combined with the the spirituality yeah. and um, it's called sacred emotion retreat mm -hmm. and um it's coming up march uh mm -hmm. so uh yeah my pro our, both of our programs start next week mm -hmm. but if you want to um go deeper with the work that you're doing yeah. um you know with us or start doing some work with us um now and then go into the retreat um it's uh it, every everyone on our retreats has said how profound it was and mm -hmm. it's nothing like um, anything that you've experienced it's a very small group of women it's seven women we hold a very safe and sacred space mm -hmm. for things to arise that um, you don't feel safe enough you know in your everyday or there's too many distractions mm -hmm. um, or defenses <laughs> keeping you from going to those places and yeah. that's what um, I specialize in and Janet also mm -hmm. is very um, present for whatever is arising as well and to help um, bring it um, deeper for you to experience what you need to to make the shifts that you need to to break out of the patterns um, from childhood mm -hmm. Uh, that you may still unconsciously be in and so come to the retreat if you really feel like you're enough is enough with whatever you've been experiencing <laughs> and that you're ready to live more from your intuition mm -hmm. and get what you really want yeah it yeah. is one of the most profound things I've ever witnessed and and it, it every single one of them <laughs> so we have a yeah. question um, mm -hmm. from Jessica who what are your favorite authors inspirations inside and outside of business hmm. authors slash inspirations well yeah we shared about Jim Mazur, <laughs> who's our business coach. Yeah. Uh, and an author. And an author. Mm -hmm. And she's very inspiring to yeah. us <laughs> in what she's creating. Yeah. Um, I uh, think um, Brene Brown is pretty inspiring. I think um, a wholesome in a, in a kind of holistic way. Um, but I think for this for the spiritual aspect, I'll speak to that, mm -hmm. is um, I think that some of the most powerful books I've read, Neil Donald Walsh, his Conversations with God um, series is very mind opening and there's a lot of information in there. And um, I think, you know, for me early in my journey, it opened up and, and, and so some of this depends where you're on the journey, but I think no matter where you are on your journey, you can find inspiration from his, from his work, from the Conversations series. It's there, it's something that opened up, everything opened up my mind and expanded my awareness and really allowed me to see beyond, more fully beyond just the physical. Um, and then as far as like working in the intuitive and spiritual realm, my suggestion would be to go to a bookstore where they actually you can put your hands on the books and go to that section because everybody is so different mm -hmm. and what you, one person resonates with you know somebody who resonates with Doreen Virtue will not resonate with somebody else and so forth and so on and so with anything that is intuitive spiritual I say kind of put your hands on the books and see I'm just going to mention one other book, and that is Megan Watterson's Reveal. You know, Alicia knows how much I love this book. Um, it's a it's a book about empowerment for women in in a spiritual in, in finding spiritual connection and reclaiming the divine feminine within. So that's what I'm nah. sure. <laughs> uh, I think you know someone that I'm most aligned with, um, mm -hmm. and I love her books, mm -hmm. um, is Carolyn Mace. Um, so mm -hmm. she's like one of the first that I was like, oh, anatomy of the spirit and yeah. the lessons that we need to learn and how they show up in the body. And mm -hmm. um, so I, I really, really love her work and she really covers it all in terms of what's needed to be, you know, who we really are mm -hmm. um, on all levels and even, you know, the connection to spirit and mm -hmm. community and um, ourselves and breaking out of the tribal, um, you know, 
where we get stuck is when we're afraid to break out of the tribe. <laughs> no. um, and so, yeah, I just, I love her. I haven't listened to her stuff in a long time. There's many, many books that I recommend um, in my programs and things, but um, mm -hmm. I think another one, I don't have any ones on business actually. Um, I haven't read any books. I have them. a hard time reading business books. Um, yeah, I I think with business, I've gotten what I've gotten from my mentors, and that for me has resonated. Yeah. I have a hard time sitting still for a business. This book. is my business book. <laughs> <laughs> I've like always had that um, connection. Yeah. So, uh, and I think it's hard to read a business book because it is so fluid and personal and individual um, in terms mm -hmm. of what you need, what you specifically need, where you are. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's, there's probably great business books out yeah. there, but um, yeah, the only other one is I just love um, Untethered Soul, which I recommend. Yeah, you know, in, in Your Soul's Gift. Mm -hmm. Your Soul's yeah. Gift is really good. And, yes. uh, those are all, you know, not so practical, <laughs> but they feel good. To They're read. expansive. <laughs> yeah, They're expansive. All expansive. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. And and I second anatomy of the spirit. And from the perspective of an energy healer, anatomy uh, anatomy of the spirit is is great too because it gives you a really fantastic rundown of the energy body as well. Yeah, and there mm -hmm. aren't really books also that are um, good for emotional healing because you cannot do emotional healing through a book. You have to work with someone. You know, there's books, I love mm -hmm. um, um, The Language of Emotions, talks about the purpose of each emotion, how important mm -hmm. it is to feel all emotions and why, you know, anger is healthy and when it's unhealthy. Mm -hmm. um, so that was one of the, you know, I love, that was a, huge game changer for me in terms of understanding emotions better mm -hmm. um, to embrace them to do the emotional healing work so but uh, it's hard to, to people often ask me well can you just write a book you know to, so I, would, I can't afford your programs can you just write a book and I was like y you would have read the there's so many books out there but mm -hmm. you can't do it through a book you yeah. can't see through your own defenses and, yeah yeah, so you need to be supported through the emotional healing process. It's really important. And it's hard to do, and, and you can't do it just through one session either. That's why I don't offer just one session. Mm -hmm. um, it's always been through a supported process because it's a process that needs to be supported because uh, there's so much stuff that comes up. And I put that together mm -hmm. because something I didn't share, when I started doing, I started accessing my anger um, when I left Thailand, uh, I went into a lot of triggers and I had no... Um, internal support system or awareness of how to work you know how to give myself what I needed to work through these um, intense emotions and so that's one of the reasons why I put together the the process because um, mm -hmm. it needs to be supported so <laughs> I think we've covered it all <laughs> um, I think there was there was a question um, did you struggle with the financial support to get the help you needed through these 10 years um, I don't know if you saw the whole video, Jessica. Yeah. We, <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Watch the video. <laughs> we talked about all our struggles. Um, yeah. uh, both Janet and I struggled a lot. And I even shared a story about um, one time Janet helped me when I was homeless. <laughs> <laughs> With no money. <laughs> all right. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, we'll share um, all the links to the things that we talked about and answer any questions that you may have. If mm -hmm. you're just watching this, if it's not live, feel free to ask us any questions in the comments. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we're yeah, thank you. excited to um, share all this information. A lot of it was new that we haven't shared before, mm -hmm. but um, hopefully it helped and uh, hopefully it'll help prepare you for whatever stage of growth you're in of maybe accepting more of the struggles mm -hmm. and the challenges and then maybe for others taking more risks when mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense but you know it can happen so. yeah so happy new awesome. year happy new year thank you okay, love to mm -hmm. all you bye, bye. <laughs>